Welcome to Larry's Topics. Today we're going to discuss Halloween kills. Alright, it's sweeping well around here like a storm. Fans can't get enough. I don't know how to do editing to show you clips from the trailer and voice my opinion. You know, I'm still trying to figure that out. But I will discuss what I saw. Well, the first scene is, of course, the the sneak trailer we all saw where... Jamie Lee Curtis, a.k.a. Lori Strode, her granddaughter and daughter are in the back of a farmer's truck going away from the burning house. At which point, they scream, crying, no, no. And then Lori screams, just let it burn. So what happens? Firemen come in, trying to save whoever might be in the house. A fire loan, one of the firefighters falls through the floor and doesn't show it, but you can be safe to assume Michael killed him, right? And his buddy can't see him because all the smoke says, give me your hand, give me your hand. And then Michael Myers' hand reaches up and grabs his. Well, it's safe to say Michael killed him too. And then Michael Myers comes out and it shows an awesome scene of the house burning around him. Stop. And he'd be using a fireman tool, kind of like a pickaxe, almost. They used to rip down burning, breaking pieces of wood to get through walls that are no longer stable and safe to try and find any survivors. Well, he, with that in hand, he doesn't show it, but it's obvious he dispatches some firefighters. One starts up what looks like a giant uh, skill saw and goes after Michael with it. Michael, of course, catches it in his hands before turning it and using it on said firefighter. The, I think he was a ranger or some kind of higher up law officer to the, in the first Halloween 2018 tells Lori that or I think it's her daughter, or maybe it's both, that Michael survived. Where it jumps around, you know, and it shows Anthony Michael Hall, who's playing Tommy Doyle. Um, another person did a review and pointed out stuff. Um, there's a scene in the trailer where... Uh, Michael uses uh, a fluorescent tube light and stabs a poor elderly black woman in the throat with it. And then it shows him also slamming a guy's head into a door, throwing him on the table, and then, of course, lo and behold, stab him in the back with the butcher knife person said they thought it was Tommy Doyle but it wouldn't make sense when you stop thinking about it it could be just someone with light colored hair that's hairs cut short like Michael Anthony Hall's because you stop thinking about it why would it show Michael Anthony Hall in a leather jacket and you know looking like a 
enraged father, from what I gather he's supposed to be. <coughs> to a guy in his house wearing a nice evening sweater jacket. Or one of those what people call grandpa sweaters, you know. If you're old enough and you've seen Big Daddy, you know the one I'm talking about. The one the guy's wearing when Adam Sandler finds out his girlfriend's been cheating on him with a guy old enough to be your father. Or in her, her case, grandfather. Right? It's the Mr. Rogers sweater. So to speak. If we're going to mention it, mention sweaters and house sweaters that are, that were made popular. Who else but the man who made them popular? Mr. Rogers. Right? Guy thought it was Tommy Doyle. I don't think it was. Because Tommy Doyle has blondish brown hair or blondish red hair. Depending on, you know, grays and that. And I don't think he, it's going to show him with many grays. And this dude had gray hair. And Michael, it just, it totally clashes with the look that they show Tommy Doyle in compared to what this guy's wearing in a house. He's wearing a sweater coat or whatever it is you know the ones elderly people wear the, over their their regular clothes like mr rogers wore you know i don't know if it zips up or buttons up but he's wearing one like that because when it shows tommy doyle he is of course wearing obviously black leather jacket, black shirt, and he's carrying a baseball bat, and I'm assuming he's either wearing black jeans or blue jeans, and nine times out of ten, probably some steel toe boots, you know, like a construction worker would wear, All right, that doesn't say grandpa sweater to me, sorry bud, um, you see Lori, I stab herself with the syringe which I'm assuming is probably uh, some people are saying it's adrenaline others are saying some kind of painkiller what if it's a uh, adrenaline painkiller cocktail because she says tonight he's gonna die Michael Myers is gonna die evil's gonna die and it shows her, at one point, walking out of the hospital in her clothes she was already wearing. Obviously sore, because she looks sore. And holding Michael's bloody butcher knife. So yeah, she plans on killing Michael. At all costs. But she mentions something interesting. Which would actually help with what they did to him. You know, making him an old man. But she says, and I quote, No man would have, could have survived that fire. With each kill he takes, he transcends. Meaning he's becoming more powerful. Meaning whatever evil's inside him is getting stronger. So if that's the case, guess what? He can go back on the Titans list. Which would explain, you know, because he hasn't been killing. And there are demons out there where if they don't kill. After so long, they start to become weak and frail. But when they are on a killing spree... 
the more they kill, the stronger they become. And the harder it is to kill them. Which would be cool. It also would be kind of... You know, they don't show it, but it would be kind of cool if it showed, like... While on these killing sprees, like... His fingers regenerate. That she blew off. That would be cool, because... It would give it a more of a supernatural feel that showing the increase of his powers. He's regenerating, making it harder for them to kill him, which would actually open up the market again for Jason, Michael Myers versus Jason, or Jason versus Michael Myers. Because so long as something supernatural, I'm not being a stickler, but so long as something supernatural is happening to Michael with each kill, the more powerful he gets, the more he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jason Voorhees, which is one thing so many fans want. And another thing so many fans want is what was supposed to be released in 2014. Wait, no. Was it 2003? Yeah, 2000. No, it would have been 2004, 2005. When uh, Freddy vs. Jason came out, they were teasing, and they couldn't get it, and that's what hurt, upset so many people, was permission from... Not New Line, was it... Sony, I think? One of the movie companies wouldn't give them the okay, because it was supposed to end with... Uh, Freddy vs. Jason was actually supposed to end with uh, Pinhead walking out going, gentlemen, gentlemen, what seems to be the problem? Which was supposed to entice, uh, and they hadn't given it a name, but they gave it a collaboration nickname for now, which was supposed to be a hell-raising Friday the 13th nightmare on Halloween. Which would have seen Freddy and Jason go at it again, introduce Michael Myers, and their fight getting to be so much with the three of them that Pinhead himself comes to collect. And he would fight and dispatch all of them, taking them to hell for good. Well, you know, until they get kid they get released again. You know. Which honestly would be pretty awesome to watch him rip people rip Freddie, Jason, and Michael Myers apart with his chains and hooks. But we won't know until we know, you know? But, yeah, if there's some kind of supernatural force at play with Michael Myers, he's going to be an undoubtable fool, foe. I'm going to make him hard to kill. And it says he kills a lot. And I've seen, like, nine people that most likely have died in the trailer. He, he, it's said that you might get to see Michael without his legendary mask, which people would like to see. But it also shows him being taunted with his mask by Lori's daughter. There's a lot going on in this trailer. And if they just leave it, you know, and only add just a little bit here and there, just enough to keep the... Fans, taste buds percolating, so to speak. They could not be disappointed. And the kill margin is supposed to be way higher than all the others. They make a, 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 a nod to the Halloween 3 season of The Witch by showing 
on a merry-go-round. Two people, one wearing a jack-o'-lantern's mask from Season of the Witch. And one wearing the skull mask from Season of the Witch. And then it eventually shows someone being hung wearing the Shamrock's witch mask. That would be awesome. It would be perfect. Right? And there's supposed to be another one coming out. And it's supposed to be called Halloween Ends. I guess is the title they're going with. Where it's supposed... That one's even supposed to be worse than the last two. So the kill count's supposed to be even higher. It would be awesome if we could get that movie where Pinhead eventually comes and tears them all apart and takes them all to hell. Just, I don't know how he'd do it with Jason because Jason, basically, he's he's not dead, dead, but he's not alive. He's kind of like in between. And so long as there's a piece of him or, Behind, Jason will always live. And that's Freddy's fault because Freddy, posing as Jason's mother, tells him, <coughs> and I quote, it's been a while, but basically it's, no matter what they do to you, you cannot die. You can never die. You've just been sleeping, honey. So, yeah. Jason always has been an obedient mama's boy. So, yeah. Telling Jason that, Jason listens to mommy. Even if it was Freddy, he's still going to listen to mommy. So, yeah. <laughs> Jason's a one-man killing machine, and I guess Michael's on that road, too. <laughs> but we have to wait and see. Share your opinions down in the comments. Like this video. Subscribe if you choose. Um, keep the heart racing. The blood spilling. Don't forget to curl up in a blanket if you get too scared. And snuggle up with that one you love. Have a good one. Bye.